I want to work on some ukemi things, some basic ukemi practices. And if you shift from sitting this way to putting one knee up and one knee down against the mat, then you'll find your weight shift to the sits bone of the knee that's down, all right? And what we want to do is trace a path from that sits bone to the opposite shoulder, a diagonal path. Now, if you'll rock back to the opposite shoulder, that's it you'll get uh, the weight transferring in a diagonal path and that's the most basic thing you want to teach a beginner the first time they come in, in my mind. Switch sides and you'll now get a diagonal path running the opposite direction. Alright? So that's the first fundamental and you guys can play with this as you watch or not. Um, then the second thing I usually try and get people to do once they're comfortable with that first diagonal path is to reach out and touch the toe. Start to, don't worry if you can or not, but just find that, that touch and put the weight out on the shoulder. We want the weight as far out on the shoulder as you can get it. At some point, it's going to be so far that you roll to the side. I would rather they did that because they're not going to hurt their head, they're not going to hurt their neck, they're not going to hurt themselves probably. But as far out to the side as you can get so that you're likely to save and protect your head. So touch your toe, transferring the weight in a diagonal path. And those are the fundamentals I try and get a beginner to do. Once they can get that diagonal path, once that's translated into the body, then I'd ask you to reach out and touch your toe and stay there. All right? If your position is right and if you can get your balance there, your head should not touch the mat. So bring your ear against your shoulder. When I teach beginners, I usually, when I'm teaching them the diagonal path, I tell them there's a little person sitting on their shoulders trying to teach them how to roll. And if they'll get real close, they can hear what he's saying. <laughs> so as I tip my head way out of the way, when I touch there, my head's not touching the mat. Go ahead. Yeah. All right, once you can get somebody to balance there, come back. And then I encourage them to relax at that point and see if you can, let me go first, if you can hang out there for a second in a pretty comfortable way. You should be able to talk, you should be able to breathe, you should be pretty comfortable in that position. If you are, go ahead. Once someone's in that position with the knee, uh, toe touching, you can touch the knee. Once you've touched the knee, you've completed the roll. All right, and just come bring your head on up. So watch me once again. Touch the toe, touch the knee, and you're through. Okay? Go ahead. And this to me are the kind of basic fundamentals I'd like every beginner to have because the thing I don't want is the head hitting the mat or particularly putting pressure on the neck. On the mat, of course, if your head touches, it doesn't hurt, but on a hard surface, it would. So you'd like your uh, body to move through, the head never touches the mat. As you slow it down, if you don't have your balance together, it becomes really obvious, and it's much harder, but the same thing's true on the forward roll. I'm just moving at a very continuously slow speed, and in order to do that, I've got to find my own center in a much better way. You'll see, you know, if I step back with my right foot and sit near my right heel, I should go over my left shoulder. And you'll see people who will do that, and while they're in the middle of the roll, they'll switch and go over on their right shoulder. But that's usually the place where as they start to go over and then switch, that's when the neck gets hurt. So that's the, probably the real thing you should watch for with the students is when they, uh, you see them going on the same shoulder no matter which side you throw them on. And then just stop them and bring them back to the very fundamental and have them switch until they can get their weight on the opposite shoulder and balance there. Once you can hang out there, once your body memorizes that path, it's pretty much, uh, how do they say, as easy as pie. So let's go through the steps real quick. One knee down, one knee up, shifting the weight to the down sits bone diagonally to the opposite shoulder. Balance, touch the knee, 
swing through. And, all right, so once your diagonal path is good, your head's not touching, you're no putting any pressure on the neck, you can balance on the shoulder, touch the toe, touch the knee, swing the leg through. That's your basic move. Uh, I generally find that uh, very few people have any trouble once they're here, standing up from here. And almost no one has any trouble going from here back to here. Once you're here, sit, sits bone, opposite shoulder, touch the knee, touch the toe, touch the knee, swing leg through, step through. Basic, okay? Once I've got them comfortable with that move, basically you can teach a beginner to roll from standing to standing pretty quickly. And you've got the right fundamentals in there. Then I ask them to stop here and come back to where they were. And they don't realize it, but they just learned a forward roll. All right. It's virtually the same move. The next step, bring the knee off, let them touch the knee at first and come through. And as soon as they're looking fluid from there, then with the knee off without touching the knee, come through the roll. All right. So the next danger point becomes the shoulder. You don't want somebody jamming their shoulder in. So that's when I start this kind of sankyo type move. I roll the arm over. Okay. And then we can bring them up to standing and bring them through. The only other piece I wanted to add on the forward roll is that we don't want to get in the habit of letting the heel hit which a lot of people do on the mat, not a big deal, but on a hard surface it would be very bad. So we'd like to reach with the toe. And if you can, and I'll see if I can exaggerate this, you'd like to have the toe, uh, uh, the heel up a little bit so there's a little compression as you hit. So when you hit there's a, a little absorption in your body rather than having the foot bang and certainly not having the heel bang. So again, these are the things I'd like a beginner to know in terms of the potential danger. If I can get him in a diagonal path and the head not touching, I figure we're 90% of the way there. Uh, so because we've learned it this way, we usually then uh, do our back roll, reversing that by putting the knee down. And that's fine on the mat on the concrete, that's not so comfortable. So then we do the roll where we step back and sit near the heel and roll. And uh, it's, a, it's a basic point of knowledge, I think, that certainly by blue belt or brown belt, everyone should have that. Sitting close to the heel and rolling that way. And again, as instructors, you want to have that roll in your knowledge base and you want to make sure that as soon as it's viable that goes out to the students. To me we were talking about the concept of presence, being uh, in touch with what you're experiencing and moving in harmony with the situation. So if you have that as what you're really developing, your body should make the right adjustments. But I like to make sure that teaching staff and colored belts are demonstrating it properly and notice it when you see a beginner doing hurting their neck, hitting their head, banging their heel, always dropping on the knee, always going on the same shoulder that you correct them.